Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India We have three different ways to get the frequencies of amino acids. What are three different uh, ways to get the frequencies? Unweighted frequencies, weighted frequencies, and independent counts, right? So fine. Now, if you got the frequencies, we need to convert these frequencies into score, right? So, for example, if we have this sequence, okay, this position. So, what is the frequency of G at position number sixty? 10 by 10, right? So, this equal to 1. If we take this position, position number 9. So, if you hear there are what are the frequency of the amino acid residues? How many times T occurs? T occurs 7 times. Alanine 1 time. Glycine 1 time. Serine 1 time, right? So, now convert this into frequencies, right? The frequency of 309 at position 9 this equal to 7 by 10 this equal to 0 0.7. So, frequency of alanine at position number 9 equal to 0 0.1 right and the frequency of glycine at position number 1 9 this equal to 0 0.1 as well as frequency of serine at position number 9 is equal to 0 0.1 right get the numbers. So, now we convert these frequencies into scores. So, for first we do the entropy based score. So, here if you see this frequency right or any portion i of any specific amino acids. If it a specific portion is occupied by a single amino acid right you will get this F e of i that is equal to 1 right. If it is occupied by different amino acid residues F e i will be different depending upon the number of times each amino acid residue right occurs at particular position. If they are run randomly distributed then the frequency will be 0 0.05 right. So, we will get 0 0.05 as the frequency. Then the frequency we multiply it with the logarithmic of this frequency right to get the conservation score based on the entropy based method. Here this is not bias with amino acid composition or similarities among amino acids because we do not give any bias for the similarity of amino acids. If it is 7 2 2 for the 3 different amino acids present at the position it does not matter if it is 7 is threonine or 7 is alanine or 7 is tryptophan. Right, we do not give any weight for any of the amino acids. And there is another method that is called variance based method. So, here this will consider the frequency of amino acids same amino acid at the different positions. For example, here if you see the sequence the same amino acids located at different positions. For example, if you see glycine here and we have glycine here and glycine here and some cases it is highly conserved and some cases is with the variable re residues and look at the other residues how far they are variable. So, they compare how many positions with glycine occurs, how many positions they have similar residues and what is the proportion of these residues they take into consideration when you calculate the score. Right. Now, the equation is F e of i this is the frequency of amino acid A right in the alignment and they take the overall frequency that is F a overall frequency of this amino acid A in the alignment. So, then then compare this with any particular positions and then use this equation F e of i minus F a right take the square and finally, summation over all the pairs and then take the square root then we will get this conservation score. Here the frequency either we use weighted ones or they use the unweighted ones. If you use unweighted ones then you get this is the equation. So, n a f i divided by sigma n f i n a i equal to 1 to l or this is the number of aligned positions this is for unweighted. If you want to go with the weighted ones then we give the weightage delta a comma k comma i depending upon the weightage you can give this equal to 1 or this equal to 0. So, what are the advantages of having weightage? So, here the overall frequent amino acid frequencies which are different from different families. So, in order if you want to implement if you want to include this information then we need to give weightage for the different uh, protein families then you can see which one is highly conserved compared with the other ones. Then there is another measure this is called the sum of pairs method right here if you have these sequences you are aligned F e of i and F b of i 
uh, then we give the scoring matrix so depending upon the aligned residues. So, which scoring matrix we use? We have discussed about two matrices either Pam matrix or blossom matrix. So, we use these numbers a comma b right where a equal to 1 to 20 and b also varies from 1 to 20. So, we use any scoring matrix and then we give the weightage based on this aligned positions and you can uh, calculate the score right. So, this also depends upon the amino acid type. If the conserved position not the same residues, if similar residues are present then we get high score right. So, the value will be high if the positions are occupied by similar amino acids. If it is completely different amino acids like lysine and alanine then you will get less score compared with the similar amino acids like lysine and arginine. So, this is why we get the sum of pairs method ok. Now, we will see how to obtain the values. So, this is the one example I give two different positions position number 3 if you take position number 3 it is occupied by leucine right I will show the sequence right if you take the position number 3 this position what is the frequency of residues at position number 3 10 by 10 Come, you, this is occupied by leucine right leucine 10 times if you take the position number 6 alanine alanine 8 times D one time, E one time. So now we get the frequency. So f of a equal to zero point eight, f of d this is equal to zero point one, and f of e this is equal to zero point one. So we take position number three occupied only by leucine, and the preference is ten by ten this is equal to one. Now we convert these frequencies into score. So if we take the entropy based method, so C of i the score. 1 into logarithmic of 1 right this is equal to 0. If you take the position number 6 right the equation is f of i into logarithmic of f of i right i varies from i equal to 1 to 20. So, here we have only 3 amino acids right because 3 uh, three residues one is the point 0.8 one is point 0.1 and the point 0.1. So, no conservation score we calculate ok this is the equation what ok this is the equation right point 0.8 in logarithm of point 0.8. 0 0.1 logarithm of 0 0.1 and 0 0.1 logarithm of 0 0.1 right this is equal to 0 0.8 into this is logarithmic values we substitute the numbers and finally we get the conservation score of 0 0.638. If we have 20 different amino acids are distributed randomly then what will be the distribution what will be the score 0 0.05 right 0 0.05 for one amino acid 0 0.05 into logarithmic of 0 0.05 we will get how many, how many times 20 times we get. So, multiplied by 20. So, what is logarithmic of 0 0.05? We get the numbers and multiplied by 0 0.05 and get to divide multiplied by 20 then you get the numbers. If you compare these two values for example, this is 0 and this is 0 0.638 which one is conserved? Zero. This is conserved right because if you have all the positions occupied by the same residue then it is highly conserved. So, you can get the 0, but here this goes the negative values. If it is highly variable, then it is going less because it will get more negative values. Now, you can normalize these numbers because here we get the numbers maximum of 0 and minimum numbers. So, you can normalize. We can normalize using the equation, right? See, normalization of i for new positions. This is equal to C of i, the right? consideration of a particular residue, right? C of i minus mean of c that is c prime this equal to c, uh, c, some summation c of i by n i equal to 1 to n num, uh, number of sequences aligned in, in this position right and sigma. What is sigma? Standard deviation how to get the standard deviation this equal to c of i minus mean, mean of the c right. So, then we divided by the square right and finally, get the 0 0.5 this is not square root right square the c is confused so this is c. So, c of i minus c average you have to square it right divide by n minus 1 and take the square root right you will get this uh, deviation. So, we will use the c of i minus c 
average divided by sigma then you will get the normalization in this case you will get, get the numbers right normalized normalized with this respect to one so you get the negative values or the positive values right with respect to this one so now this is the method you can calculate the conversion score and we have several algorithms available to get the score based on all these method, methods for us one of the publicly available method is al2co that is alignment to conservation this accepts the multiple sequence alignment in cluster format what is cluster format identifier and then sequence right it is identifier and the sequence it is the program for multiple sequence alignment if you give the single sequences and if you align using cluster then you will get the output this is the identifier this is the uniprot code uniprot id and here you give the sequence so if you give this one and there are various ways you can select this is what we discussed we discussed about the different frequencies either we use independent count or we use unweighted or give weighted and the conservation score we have different ways you can use entropy based method and the variance based method and the sum of pairs method we discussed one example based on unweighted frequency and entropy based method so just for the verification i put unweighted frequency and the entropy based method so here this is the website you can get the L to CO method to get the conservation. So if you click, if you give the sub submit button, you will get the data. Right, which is asking for the positional conservation or the alignment with the integer conservation. That will get the values, or you can classify into different groups, different numbers. So if you want to check your input, this is the input alignment is here. If you click on here, you will get the input alignment, or you can get the positional conservation here. If you go with the positional conservation, okay, this is the different amino acid residues. We discussed about few positions. So remember which positions we discussed? Three. So three is the value of illusion, right? We get zero, right? Okay, here this is the value we get is equal to zero. So it matches with the number. So you can see three this equal to zero. Then we check the position number six. That is alanine, right? If with the position number six we checked the values, we get minus zero point six three eight. Here also if we see in this program we get minus zero point six three nine. Then we check position number nine. So this is equal to minus zero point nine four zero because that is more variable than the position number six. So just I show the sequence. If you see position number uh, one, three is highly conserved, sixty is conserved, and position number six that is eight plus one plus one, and position number nine seven plus one plus one plus one. So it's more variable. So if you look into the answers, so you can see the distribution of these residues. Based on conservation, right? You can see this is zero, highest one, and six is variable, and nine is again is more variable, right? So you can see the numbers. So you can get the numbers into normalized one, as I discussed earlier. So this is normalized one. You can use this equation to normalize the scores, and you get the norm normalized values. So this is the data which we obtained with the weighted matrix. If you use the weighted matrix, right? If you see here, the weighted method, right? We will get these numbers. But if you compare these two, if you have the similar set of sequences, because in this case we use ten sequences, they are from the similar uh, sequences, right? Similar family of sequences. This is why if you see there is a good correlation between this number and this number. Zeros, zeros, zero point nine, zero point nine, zero point six, but here zero point eight. You can see the correlation between the unweighted and the weighted frequencies. If you use completely different sequences, then you can see a difference between the score. Obtained with the weighted frequencies as well as the unweighted frequencies. So now the next aspect is we get some numbers, right? So here we get several numbers: 0.0, 0, 0, 0 minus 0 0.94, minus 0 0.63, and so on. How to convert into into a numerical scale? Because here we get sequence. For each sequence, we need to assign some numbers. So I want to do it between 0 and 9. If you see, this highly conserved is 9. Right, nine is highly conserved, and to see the variable it is at zero, then they automatically normalize and put the numbers for the each sequence. This is the query sequence, so we take this as the query one, and for this one they put the numbers here. These are the places where it is highly conserved, and here this are the region it is very very highly variable. Right, you can see the numbers, and these numbers you can use. As your input for several prediction algorithms that we will discuss in the later classes. This is one method. Then there are several methods which can calculate the conservation score, right? Because why we are concerned about conservation score? This will give you the structural important positions, this will give you the functional important positions, 
and these positions they try to maintain in different sequences means if you alter these residues it will have adverse effects. So, this is the reason why the conservation score is one of the features right for the predictions. Second aspect to calculate the conservation score we do not need any structure information we need only the sequence information if you gave the information regarding homologous sequences you can calculate the conservation score from the sequence right getting sequence information that is easy because we can have more number of sequences than structures right how many sequences in the Unipro database now 17 million sequences so you will more number of sequences so even if you have homologous sequences you get sufficient number of sequences for the conservation approximately how many sequences are required to calculate the conservation score Right, if you get 3 sequences you can get the conservation but is it reliable or not no right. So, if you get the reliable values so at least we need to have more than 100 sequences if you have more number of sequences we can see the variability if you have less number of sequences right now we discuss with 10 sequences many positions here we get the same residues here if you this is a sequence again only 10 sequences and if you see g is same at 60 and same at this position right and you see h is same in the position 59 it is mainly because less number of sequences if you go through 100 sequences the probability of glycine in all the 100 sequences is very less compared to the probability of glycine in the 10 sequences right. So, if you go with the more number of sequences even if you take 100 sequences and all the 100 sequences if glycine occupies at 6 position then your data are significant you can say that glycine is very important at position number 60 right. So, in this case to make sure right for the reliability of your results so you should have at least 100 sequences for calculating the conservation score. So, we discussed about AL 2 CO. So, now there is another method this is called CONSERV. So, here it is easy to do that we do not have to give any sequences if the structure is known right you can give just the PDB ID if we give the identifier of the protein data bank I will discuss about the protein data bank in later classes right. So, then automatically this will get the sequence mapped to the PDB and it will get the homologous sequences from the Unipro database and they do the multiple sequence alignment and finally you get the score. In the case of AL 2 CO what is the input multiple, multiple sequence alignment. So, you have to work take your sequence and get the similar sequence homologous sequences and you have to do the alignment and you have to give the multiple sequence alignment as the input. In this case if you give your PDB ID it will automatically get the sequence right and find the homologous sequences right and then align the sequences get the multiple sequence alignment and finally you will get the data. So, it is very simple just to give the ID but there are several issues if your PDB ID or if your sequence it does not have sufficient number of homologous sequences you will you do not get any results it will get you cannot calculate the conservation. But the case of AL to CY you know that how many sequences you get we depending upon the sequences if you give you will get the results that is the difference between using different servers. So, if you give this ID so it gets the sequence from Uniprot right from this uh, database you get the sequences and then finally it aligns from this one you can see different colors this is also easy to identify the residues which are highly conserved or which are highly variable right if you see these colors so can you see which residues are highly conserved which color magenta one if you see this one right this is L right if you see this is T this is a dark right. So, dark color you can see this residues are highly conserved easily if you see this picture you can see that the residues which are highly conserved and some cases it is highly variable for example if you see this one is occupied with leucine glutamic acid threonine aspartic acid and valine right there are various residues occupies at this particular position. So, this will clearly tell you which residues are concerned which residues are variable then we give the text file this will give complete details ok here this is your sequence. So, here this is the atom in the PDB file and this is normalized score and here they give the color code. So, color code they put the conservation as 9 and variable as 1. So, numbers varies vary from 1 to 9 and 9 is for conserved and 1 is for the variable so, this is the position in the derived sequence. So, you can see the data. So, whether what is the variability first one is mainly by lysine and the second lysine by lysine. So, that means highly conserved and the second one valine 
this occupied by different residues isolation and lysine thrown in valine. So, this is why the color code is 3 that means this is not conserved this is variable. So, here this is occupied with lysine so it is the color code is 9 so it is highly conserved. Likewise if you see the same residues so it is highly conserved if there is only 2 residues so this conserved the color is 8 then it will be highly variable right. So, you can see the color is 1. So, depending upon this variability they give color codes from 1 to 9 right and then you can see which one is conserved and which residues are variable. Then make this figure this is the actual 3D structure the how the protein looks like right. If we say different colors right can we see which positions or which location the residues are conserved and which which positions they are highly variable. If you look at this ok these regions right ok you can see some of them which are interior right they are highly conserved mainly because the residues are preferred to form the hydrophobic core. So, interior seeking residues are mainly hydrophobic residues. So, the variability is only among the hydrophobic residues. So, they prefer to be highly conserved right some cases mainly in the case of the surface right. So, you can see they are highly variable they try to interact with other residues right maybe different types of interactions in this case they have the variability to change the residues among the polar residues or charge residues and so on. So, when you have these 3 D structures then also you can see which regions are highly conserved and where are the variable regions right. So, if we get the conservation we will get a picture about the in the from the sequence level right which residues maintain to have the same position right in any homologous sequences. So, we can uh, summarize again. So, what did we discuss today? Conservation score right. So, the, the conservation score means you get the sequence similar positions right among the homologous sequences. The two steps the first step is to get the frequency what are the different ways to get the frequency? Unweighted frequency, weighted frequency and independent counts to get the score entropy based method variance based method and sum of pairs method you can get different scores right you can use any of these methods right to get the score. So, what are different algorithms we discuss online source sources AL 2 CO there is algorithm to conservation what is input required for the AL 2 CO multiple sequence alignment. So, what is another program we discussed conserve what is the input for this conserve? If we DBID, right? also it is also possible to give your sequences or the alignment right in the concept also to get the get the conservation score. So, finally, they give the numbers right from the variable to the concept that right? maximum 9 they give and the minimum they give 0 or 1. So, you can see in the PDB where you can see the conserved regions or where you have the flexible regions. So, in the next class then we will extend it right to see the how to construct phylogenetic trees right if we have the multiple sequence alignment how far the sequence are similar to each other whether 1 and 3 are similar or 1 and 5 are similar or 2 and 3 are similar right. So, based on these uh, variabilities we will try to construct trees from the tree construction we will see what are the residues or which are the sequences right which are similar to each other which are closely related to each other and so on. Thank you for your kind attention. Mm -hmm.